Hey everybody, welcome to our weekly ecosystem office hours and probably one of the most important calls that we've had about this ecosystem in a long time. Uh, first of all, apologies to Ramiro. We are very much looking forward to seeing the demo of your workbench, uh, but that has been preempted at this point by a, a larger conversation. Um, today, if somebody could go ahead and drop the uh, proposal link in the sidebar chat. Uh, there has been a pretty significant shift to the ecosystem composed of two things, essentially uh, the existing director lineup in the foundation uh, resigning yesterday and a proposal in the uh, uh, forum today that uh, outlines Grove's plans and uh, Michael's plans personally regarding uh, a change to the structure and a pretty significant change to the strategy, uh, which um, I think is a, a pretty major mind shift to everyone. So uh, I'm not going to take up the mic more. I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to Mike to get the ball rolling, and then uh, we'll go from there. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks, everyone, for coming. Uh, I'd imagine this proposal probably came as a surprise to many of you. Um, uh, I want to set some context here first, and then um, maybe just tackle uh, the questions, some of the most pertinent questions that I saw uh, in the den, and then uh, obviously be keeping an eye out here uh, on the chat. But, uh, but yeah, just to set the kind of stage here. I mean, I outlined this in the proposal, but uh, you know, we we started building this in in 2017. Um, fundamentally, I still believe that a DAO is critical to the success to the success of a protocol like Pocket. But uh, as I outlined in the proposal. Um, I think uh, we decentralized too early. Um, uh, the fact is that um, we went and uh, uh, put things. Everything was really under PNI at the time. You know, Grove, formerly known as PNI, and we always had the plan for the DAO, and we always had the plan to for me to step down to, from the foundation. And honestly, the foundation was uh, basically uh, not operational until I stepped down, uh, and and Jack and and company. Uh, started to take a lead there. Um, but looking back at how uh, everything in my mind has played out, um, uh, I think we've got a ton of unquantifiable benefits for having the structure that we have uh, up until today. Um, that means people really having a voice, uh, really people making decisions. And um, I think it was a bit, a bit of a head fake for me uh, going into 21 and 22. Uh, we spent that first year of pocket really just fixing shit, and we grew way faster than I ever anticipated. We went from something like 10 million requests a day to over a billion in about 10 months. Uh, once we figured some things out from a protocol level and from a quality of service level, and as I'm sure many of you know, uh, this was all free traffic, right? Uh, we really wanted to just prove that this network could operate at the scale that that it does. Uh, today, um, and you know, we we ended up peaking at around at around two billion requests a day, uh, which I think is an incredible accomplishment. And um, with that kind of time frame, we put in, I think, some really seminal proposals um, that just really kind of for me and really everything until then has been a uh, a great example of how a DAO can and should work. And um, uh, you know, as I outlined in the proposal. Um, I do think, you know, looking at the last, you know, two, two and a half years, we uh, have departed from, I think, a, a, a one of the core properties of, of crypto networks and, and blockchains, and that's this kind of reflexive uh, property. Uh, Pocket was unique in terms of having a dynamic inflation. And um, uh, uh, I see your question, Ben. Uh, that's, a, that's, a, that's a good question. I think um, it depends on the provider, on the gateway provider. Um, uh, uh, some folks might want to take that bet to drive free traffic, um, uh, but ultimately, uh, I don't think that people will end up succeeding because at the, at the end of the day, it is expensive to run uh, infrastructure and even for these gateways uh, itself. So people need to be able to, um, I think, long term run a business. But uh, I think people are, you know, very much how we have, you know, free tiers and this sort of thing. I think people will make those decisions uh, on a, on a gateway by gateway basis. And I don't personally think that there's anything wrong with that. Um, and yeah, we moved, uh, I think, from a point to where we thought, you know, frankly, I thought we had hit some level of product market fit. Things were growing faster than I ever anticipated. We had the Harmony moment, which I think was seminal. And uh, thanks to Adam, who's, by the way, on this call, 
um, I think he put out a really important proposal that ultimately uh, started the process to lower the inflation for the network. And, um, you know, we've seen uh, uh, that the version of that proposal evolve over the last, you know, two years or so. Um, you know, I generally think that uh, and still believe that that DAOs are important. Um, uh, I'm not uh, at all uh, advocating to uh, be the sole director or uh, uh, control everything uh, forever. Uh, but given that today we've got, you know, I think 60 or 70 DAO voters, uh, we've got an independent foundation, uh, all governing uh, uh, roughly like 100 to $120 million worth of value. Um, and uh, 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 also no, you know, clear, at least short term path forward from my perspective. Uh, although I do think the foundation is working on the right, uh, on, on the right things, medium to long term. Um, uh, I really uh, felt compelled to put in this proposal. Um, to, to give a little bit more context, um, over the last couple of years, I've had people tell me, hey, Mike, you know, are you ever going to leave the foundation, this sort of thing? Um, and frankly, like I never, I always push that off. Um, and some of these conversations got um, a little bit more, uh, maybe not urgent is the right word, but um, uh, just generally uh, just started to happen a little bit more often. And ultimately, I got to a point maybe about a month and a half ago. Um, where I seriously started considering this path. Um, uh, I was always the person saying, no, um, I think the foundation is doing uh, a great job and um, uh, I think they are working on the right things. Uh, but it really wasn't until I kind of let myself go through that path uh, uh, personally and internally that I started to let myself really understand what it would mean to, to do this. Uh, what are the needs of the network? Um, what are the needs of of all the future gateway providers, the existing providers, and, and all the future ones, um, and everything else that, that that's happening. So that's really kind of the the context here that that led to this proposal. Um, and again, I know this this is not uh, uh, me saying, "Hey, I want to do this forever." Um, it's me saying, "I want to turn this ship around." Um, I feel like I have, frankly, a, a, an obligation to do it uh, because I care deeply about the protocol, everything that we've done. And um, really, we'll do anything to make this make this a reality. So um, that's kind of a quick quick intro. Um, maybe I can pause there, or I can just dive into dive into some of the questions that I saw within uh, within the den. All right. Um, I didn't see any questions right away. So if anyone pops anything up, I'll I'll I'll, I'll take a look at it. But um, so let's talk about the first one. Um, did you, uh, uh, did you uh, propose a growth coin and offer a one-to-one -one swap to preferred investors? Uh, look, um, in this process and any process when, when big decisions, whether it's, you know, letting go of people in the company uh, or really just anything, um, I absolutely force myself to consider every single option. Um, for me, uh, forking the network is like absolute nuclear plan V. And uh, I did allow myself to uh, see what that would look like if we were to do it. Um, it never felt right. Um, uh, I would say that probably would have been operationally the easier path, but ultimately this is like absolutely the wrong thing to do, um, particularly as uh, someone who has worked in this ecosystem for so long, um, has really spent so much time thinking about it, um, uh, the incredible community that we have and everything related to it. Um, uh, uh, and ultimately, like, it's just, it's not, uh, 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 something that I think, uh, uh, was, uh, a primary path. Um, I always felt that, um, going through this process, the process that we designed, um, you know, early on, I spoke a lot with Jack about legitimacy and what that means for a network like pocket and the DAO. And, um, ultimately I, I have a responsibility to not just you all, but every single pocket holder in this, in this ecosystem. And. Uh, frankly, it just felt like the wrong thing to do, um, and I've always tried to do things uh, as uh, as with much integrity as I humanly possibly can. Uh, that obviously, uh, you know, nothing ever goes perfect, and I always try to 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 uh, uh, make the best of the decisions that we've that we've had to make. But ultimately, you know, um, yeah, the scum, you know, had absolutely had some of those conversations. Definitely had some 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 thought experiments, and ultimately just decided that was absolutely not the right path. Uh, to go around this, so um, and 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 in any case, um, a uh, 
uh, a new token would have resulted in probably uh, a similar dilution to what we're seeing now across the board, right? So um, something like this, I think, is really important. I never even, you know, uh, uh, thought about it deeply enough to under understand um, uh, what uh, 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 you know the ramifications of that are because ultimately, like, you know, just uh, uh, didn't feel uh, like the right thing to do. Uh, I see Dermot saying you left the, because of the threat of our fork. Um, look, man, um, I don't think I ever directly said that I would fork the network or uh, whatever, uh, whatever, uh, uh, whatever it was that we we talked about. Um, ultimately, the last three weeks or so have been uh, basically me in a fog of war, trying to understand what the right path is. Um, and I'm frankly really happy that this is the path that I came to. Um, at the end of the day, um, I never felt like I wanted to put the community, you know, a gun to the community's head or to your head or anyone else's. And in fact, even if this proposal doesn't pass, um, I would do everything I can to uh, push forward. I think as well, MSA say something along these lines, uh, push forward some of these proposals uh, regardless. Um, although I do think the entire proposal or the proposal in its entirety are are absolutely critical. So, um, so yeah, that's uh, 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 kind of my thinking on, on the Grove coin or Grove token or whatever it is. Um, fundamentally, you know, I really have to think about every single little thing, right? Um, uh, every single thing, uh, thing, thing possible. So, uh, so yeah, that's, uh, my main, uh, that, that's the answer there. I don't know if anyone have, um, has any questions, um, related to that specifically, but, um, I just want you to know Dermot and anyone else in the foundation, uh, the intention here is never to, uh, threaten you guys with a fork or anything like that. So, um. Uh, how are RPC businesses going to properly be built on pocket? Are RPC is a dead end in your opinion? Uh, can you elaborate on why you believe it doesn't make sense to proceed with exchanges? Uh, you know, um, I'll take the second question first from from Breezy. Um, ultimately, I think, like I say in the proposal, we should have some level of unified leadership. I think the hardest thing about something like this is resetting expectations. Um, when you give out control, uh, anything, um, it's extremely hard, uh, 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 to, to kind of claw back if you will. Um, and ultimately, like, I feel like I need to be able to be touching every piece of this, um, and lead the way that I have been leading, uh, since I started the company. Um, and, um, this just felt like an incredibly important thing, right? For, for me, uh, personally, um, this also comes with. I think um, I think I, I wrote this in the, in, the, in the dissenting opinions of the post, but um, really the last uh, 12 months of just kind of getting back to my own normal self that uh, predated uh, some of the craziness over the last few years as well. Um, so hopefully that was uh, a clear enough answer for you, Breezy. I'm happy to, to elaborate even more if you, if you need it. Um, how are RPC businesses going to properly build on pocket? Um, RPCs are definitely dead. In my opinion, um, I think my uh, opinions on the market have changed over the last 12 months. Um, the fact is RPC, uh, uh, sorry, I'm just reading some questions as, uh, as, as I'm talking through this. Um, I think the RPC market is incredibly competitive, um, not growing as fast as other uh, uh, verticals, but still growing. If I had to you know, give a, you know, pull out of my ass CAGR, I'd put it somewhere between 10 and 20%. Um, I have, you know, correlated what I think the, uh, annual ARR for RPC is across everyone who's paying from, you know, the founders of Infura, Alchemy and Quicknode and, and a bunch of others. General agreement is in the, it's in the 500 million range. And if I had to guess somewhere between 25 to 50% of that potential revenue is, is, is used as free, uh, as free traffic. Uh, so meaning, you know. Uh, uh, the RPC market could be a, you know, a billion dollar a year market, or it could be a $2 billion a year market. But, um, the fact is that, um, uh, 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 it's, it's a, it's a hard and competitive market. Um, when we do sales, when we, when we try to, uh, uh, close deals, um, it's very relationship driven. It's also very, um, you know, you need a triggering event, uh, whether that be a big bill or intermittent service, whatever it might be. RPC is generally pretty sticky, we found. 
Uh, once people find a service that works, uh, they try not to switch unless uh, something serious happens or, or you know, there's some shifting in the company or, or something like that. Um, I think that's where I think uh, uh, having so many gateways is so advantageous for the network when it comes to just RPC, uh, because um, uh, this allows every individual gateway uh, whose costs basically scale with their traffic uh, to build, I think, a profitable business or make the trade-offs that they want to from scratch, right? Um, uh, at the end of the day. So uh, folks like Great Guild and DevDAO and Chainstack, you know, they're all in different types of scenarios or, or, or nodes. Um, but ultimately you can choose as a gateway to say, hey, I'm gonna charge for this or I'm gonna do this, uh, have this for free at the end of the day. So, um, and that's a business decision and a strategic decision that each individual gateway can, uh, uh, should have themselves. Um, I think gateways are gonna continue to get cheaper. You know, Grove is on Google today. Uh, I fully expect there to be, in fact, I'm, there probably already are gateways that are running on bare metal, for example, that have a different cost basis than us at this point. So um, that's why I think it's so important to uh, move across uh, different types of services and effectively expand Pockets TAM. Uh, we're obviously doing the, uh, the AI inference service, which is currently uh, in process from a growth perspective. And I really want to be able to accelerate not just AI, but other interfaces. And I've, I've talked about that in the past. Um, Steve, uh, good question. Um, in your proposal, you say this proposal is meant uh, to put the DAO and constitution on pause. How long do you expect the pause to be and uh, how will that define? Admittedly, that's not defined in the proposal. Um, uh, it's hard to say. Um, I'm happy to think through or talk through uh, various different kind of touch points or milestones or whatever it might be. I did time box the compensation portion of the proposal to three years at the very least to see where we are at that point. Um, but I'm happy to, to, to think through um, uh, things going through, uh, to, to think through things as we are uh, in route. Um, and one thing that I think is really important here is um, uh, 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 this doesn't mean that decisions are gonna be made you know, in a smoky back room. I think it's just really important. And frankly, like I don't expect to have all the answers, but I do expect to move quickly and decide whether um, things are working or not working very quickly. Um, succession, will there be a plan? Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, absolutely. I would expect to have some level of other uh, uh, directors uh, even before this proposal, uh, even before the first milestones for that matter. Um, again, I just feel like I need to lead this and, and, and move forward with uh, 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 kind of the plan I, I, I laid out, and it's not an either or, it's an and with, I think, many of the, um, uh, many of the efforts and work streams that the foundation has today. Dermot, why did the pros, uh, why did the price go from $1 to 4 cents under Grove's watch? Um, that's a good question. Um, I think, uh, there's a lot of factors here. Um, you know, we had exchanges, we had a fraction, uh, a fraction of liquidity. Um, I think that's a big piece. Um, frankly, I just fundamentally, as I lay out in the uh, proposal, um, I think the moment that we neutered uh, kind of this reflexive dynamic within the network. Um, sorry, the, the, the chat is distracting me. I'm gonna just close it as I'm, as I'm talking. Um, lost my train of thought. So uh, I do believe that in hindsight, the uh, proposal to flatten out emissions or inflation, regardless of what the traffic is, um, basically uh, uh, neuter this kind of supply side demand. Um, I completely agree that this was completely unsustainable back in 2021 and 2022, uh, but seeing uh, where it's taken us and seeing how much of an uphill battle it's been to uh, create liquidity, you know, at that time we were pretty uh, fairly liquid, uh, either through the um, uh, uh, OTC channels or those existing exchanges, but if you all recall, uh, I think we got listed on you know the first or second week of January, and we had the first um, inflation proposal, inflation reduction proposal passed. I think a week or two after that, um, and I do think that that is a uh, a big reason why. Um, and yeah, you know, Grove lost an incentive to uh, pay for free traffic, right? As a result of this. Uh, because of this dynamic, um, you know, I was focused on, on on turning the company around, given where we were at 18, 24 months ago. Um, but I just think or anything like that. 
but I do think that um, shifting our kind of economic philosophy from a uh, deflationary goal, at least until Shannon, um, to um, basically having a shot in the arm for the ecosystem, uh, I think uh, are some of the factors that we can control at this point in time. Who will the directors be and how will they Can you guys hear me? No, or, you're not cut out pretty uh, aggressively, Michael. I think uh, you yeah. were starting to answer the director's question. Okay, um, on the directors. So, like I said, we're putting the DAO, I'm proposing to put the DAO on pause here. Um, uh, but once we uh, uh, kind of get our feet settled, I would expect the same process to happen in terms of voting in new, new directors. Um, like I said, I think the DAO is just a really critical check and balance, uh, particularly as we start to drive value to the network and the token. Um, I think one of the key things that I've learned here over the last you know, two to three years is I've just been so laser focused on, on product and real usage um, that frankly, like, you know, didn't care much about, as much about the price of the token at the end of the day. Um, I think, I suppose naively, I felt that by proving real traffic, real revenue, um, even with uh, 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 the burn, uh, that this would make a difference, and uh, ultimately, it's just pretty clear that uh, the market doesn't value that, and uh, and at least as of at least as of right now, um, uh, ultimately, I think we have the ability to um, kind of reset things and drive um, kind of new incentives and net new pocket purchases. I think one important thing as well is that you know we didn't have delegation back then, um, and uh, uh, we had a big you know lots of conversations back then about an over provisioning of the network. Um, I think Shane Gandalf proposal is really critical to allow for individual node runners uh, to come on board. But also now that we have proper delegations, um, uh, proper delegation, um, uh, we're able to, to to actually potentially impact uh, uh, people wanting to purchase uh, the token again through through incentives. Um, and I think through our long term vision vision of of the protocol at the end of the day. Uh, how long do you see the Dow and Constitution being put on pause? Um, you know, I time box this for three years. Um, I would like to see where we're at in the next three to six months at the very least. Uh, but I'm happy to have that conversation on the forum. Um, uh, this is not uh, black and white for me. So uh, just generally, um, uh, I'd like to, to to see where we get in the next three to six months, maybe, maybe even a year. But regardless, um, having... Uh, the foundation uh, and ultimately myself help kind of drive this effort uh, is is really what I'm trying to get to and and a bit of a resetting of expectations here, right? Because I see a question here about is it easier to make the DAO more efficient rather than centralizing the whole project? Um, one, I don't think this is centralizing the whole project. Um, you know, you see this within Solana, you see this within Ethereum, where where kind of the core team decides. You know, after tons of conversation on forums and this sort of thing. And granted, they are at much higher valuations and. Uh, admittedly, should move slower, right? I don't think we're at that point right now. Um, uh, 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 and sorry, I'm just keep looking. I gotta cut out this chat because otherwise it's distracting me. Um, uh, uh, and when you talk about the DAO being more efficient, um, ultimately, like I what, what I really want to, to see here is is alignment on the economic strategy, um, and uh, uh, not have to go back for various different types of of parameter changes and this sort of thing. Um, I expect to the same conversations to be happening. Um, and as new data comes out, as new things come out, sharing that with everyone and, uh, you know, uh, having my own opinions and insights, but clearly having um, uh, 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 the, the, the opinions of many of the folks here as well. So. Uh, ramping up, ramping up, uh, short ramping up reward short term could increase usage, but once we get get back to low inflation, won't we end up where we are right now? What will materially what will materially change? 
Um, the main thing that's changing here is um, uh, uh, the economic philosophy, right? So we are moving from a static inflation uh, to a dynamic inflation with hard resets once we reach um, a specific uh, point. So let's say we're at 5% today, we hit 20%. The moment we hit 20%, people got to enjoy that 5 to 20% journey, and then we reset it back to 5%. Um, the question is, how do we mitigate that downside um, reflexive uh, uh, mechanism? Uh, one, I think historically, uh, pocket staking is pretty sticky, uh, whether it's people you know, selling the rewards. Um, generally, we haven't seen people also unstake and uh, sell out their their entire uh, their entire uh, pocked, uh, and that's because of the twenty one day staking period. Um, I think, given the uh, ability to uh, lower or remove the burn um, and increase the amount of gateways driving traffic to the network, we have a natural uh, growth in effectively distribution for new RPC or whatever other interface coming onto the network. Um, so even if you think about this, because really ultimately reflectivity is a um, uh, social economic theory. Um, uh, if you expect more people to, uh, more traffic to be driven to the network, that means my rewards will go up um, and I'm more likely to um, uh, uh, keep my pocket, right? Or keep staking my pocket, maybe some rewards and, 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 depending and that sort of thing. Uh, the other thing is also implementing different types of mechanisms. We've seen this with Filecoin. If you stake for one year, you get um, X amount of rewards. If you stake for five years, you get Y amount of rewards. Uh, so I think there's multiple different strategies uh, to implement that uh, basically uh, disincentivize that kind of downside reflexive loop as well. I'm just looking through the, the questions here. Why was the surprise thrown at the community? It should have been transitioned slowly and carefully keeping in mind the image and PR of the project. Pocket can't just keep making sudden moves every year. It happened last year when PNF took over and it's happening again. Um, you know, this is really, I think, the first sudden move. I don't think uh, anything else was really, um, let's call it, uh, uh, out of the blue. Um, many of the other conversations happened uh, pretty transparently in this case. Um, the fact is, like, you know, uh, 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 things looked up uh, late this year, late last year, and ultimately, you know, I'm personally feeling the pressure uh, given where uh, uh, we're at, you know, 18 months in with, with the foundation. And sorry, Ben, I missed, I missed your question. I'll, I'll, I'll handle it in a minute. Um, so I wouldn't characterize this pocket making sudden moves every year. Um, in fact, I would, I would argue this is really the first major kind of like surprise uh, proposal that, that is really, um, really would be a major shift within things. So um, ultimately, when you talk about the surprise, I, I think I should have and could have put out these economic proposals, um, you know, six months ago, uh, nine months ago, 12 months ago. Um, but ultimately, I think it's taken time for me to just see the, the impact of this. Um, and it's also just, you know, me just really focusing on, on growth at the end of the day and, and trying to get that turned around because a lot has happened in the last 18 months. And frankly, that's, that's on me. Um, ben, why should Grove get 48 million pocked for shipping a Shannon protocol that is 12 to 18 months late? Uh, Shannon is a, I think, fundamentally um, technical innovation, um, and it is incredibly difficult to build. Um, you know, starting from V1 or V0 of Pocket or Morse, you know, we started thinking about this in 2017 and didn't launch it until until 2020, July 2020. Um, when it comes to Shannon, we put out the first white paper for this. Um, I think it was in 2021, January 2021 is when I think we put out the first white paper for this. And from there, we've seen twice over a turnover on the protocol team, um, either from burnout from the uh, 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 initial team that built the first version of Pocket, um, or just turnover from uh, uh, the series of layoffs we had last year and, and some other reasons. Um, I would say that things have really picked up since uh, we put the protocol development on pause last year and um, uh, uh, did really a, a true research sprint on uh, what's the right way to do this because we started to see right, uh, uh, the, right, you know, the right amount of signal, whether from you know, base picking up, uh, other people picking this up. And ultimately, it's a question of trade-offs. So we want to take a risk on 
uh, some new untested technology in the form of a rollup uh, and or or which is basically building an entire protocol from scratch. Um, it got to the point to where one that signal was there, um, two uh, it was incredibly difficult to build an entire end to end protocol uh, on a two string budget with maybe three or four or five protocol team members, and ultimately okay. led us to this decision back in in November. Um, and I would argue that this was probably the best thing we could have done. We in fact, uh -huh. you know, chose to work yeah. on Rollkit at first. And as we dug deeper, we started to see more roadblocks than than help, uh, and ultimately uh, than things that helped. And ultimately decided to move toward um, uh, uh, the Cosmos SDK. Which since then, um, uh, things have been, I think, moving incredibly fast. Um, you know, we're on track for something this year in terms of a launch and something within. You know, if we finalized that decision in November last year, uh, and then pivoting to Cosmos SDK from Rollkit, uh, maybe early this year around East Denver, so like February, uh, I believe, um, uh, it's been moving incredibly fast. Uh, and uh, we have a test net and we have line of sight to a main net. And when I think about the amount of work and technical talent that is required to actually build this, um, you know, I don't think we would be here without Olshansky uh, and the protocol team. I see a few of the protocol team on this call right now. Um, this is just fundamentally incredibly hard work. Um, if you take a look at the relay mining paper that Olshansky and Ramiro uh, put out, um, this is like real thinking and real, like some of the deepest uh, computer science work that you can do. And frankly, I, just, I think they deserve to be uh, rewarded for that um, uh, because this is truly, truly a difficult thing. Um, so, you know, uh, a lot of stuff has happened in the last few years, obviously, uh, but, um, that's just my opinion and people might think otherwise, but happy to, to talk through that. How will PIP 38 replace PUP 32? Um, I believe PUP 32 is AR, if I'm not mistaken. Um, basically, uh, uh, the only thing that's changing here is setting a target, um, inflation rate rather than keeping it. Uh, and a reset, uh, so so like a reset target and a, a maximum target, let's call it. Um, uh, uh, so uh, effectively, rather than having, I think it's around 220K talked minted um, a day, um, I want to be able to let that roll uh, so that node runners are rewarded um, so that there's higher incentives for more folks to come in uh, outside of the existing community and um, uh, uh, ultimately uh, be able to reset that as needed. Um, as a part of the proposal as well, um, I want to highlight any extreme um, uh, 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 changes in inflations on a chain-to-chain -chain basis um, are focused on the new or under-trafficked chains. Um, so what that means is as traffic increases on these chains, because they're already quite low, um, that means that, you know, in aggregate, the inflation is not, the, the aggregate inflation is not impacted directly. Uh, or, or, or very largely. Um, and also as gateways start to uh, drive traffic to Ethereum, Polygon, I'm, I'm, I'm suggesting in the proposal to keep that at the baseline inflation, um, but allow for uh, some of the uh, experimentation on new chains specifically. And this does a couple of things. This uh, creates higher incentives for individual node runners, particularly with the advent of Gandalf, um, and as well as existing node runners uh, to be able to support these chains as well. So. Um, ultimately, um, uh, yes, emissions will, will, will go up, uh, but they'll also reset. Um, and I just want to just highlight here that, uh, with the advent of Fanon, uh, and permissionless gateways, um, I think the right approach here, which requires, I think, um, uh, a good amount of thinking is to actually keep it one-to-one -one with the burn and the mint and, uh, use the Dow treasury, uh, to effectively create, um, airdrops and incentives for folks. Uh, participating in the network in a, in a similar way, just in a, in a delayed form, basically. Uh, but that's not fully formed. Um, I think uh, that requires a bit of thinking and thought uh, behind it. Hmm. Can I was unable to do anything about price action back when they were in charge? How can the community trust them again to do exactly that? By approving this proposal, we are basically canceling almost all the previous year's progress on inflation and protocol revenue side. Um, look, uh, I don't think... Uh, 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 let's call it the narrative of burn and um, uh, revenue is, is that powerful right now? Um, I think it's more powerful the, the larger you are as a project. Um, uh, also, given the economics we had at the time, um, to be honest, that was all under P&I. 
um, uh, that entire uh, pump from ten cents to three dollars was uh, under PNI, and then I didn't step down from the foundation until um, uh, 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 maybe like nine months later, something like that. Um, and fundamentally, I agreed with the original proposal. Um, I thought that was the right approach. Um, so it's not about, uh, uh, and it's also not about trusting PNI here as well, or or Grove in this case. Um, I just want to make it clear: this is not um, Grove moving to the foundation or subsuming the foundation. Um, this is me moving to the foundation and independently operating the foundation with the hindsight of two and three and four years of this protocol, actually very soon to be four years at the end of this month, uh, this protocol being live. Um, uh, Grove knows exactly what it needs to do um, and I think has become a machine and, and the team is incredible on that side. Um, so we're clear here, um, Ahmed, um, uh, this is me uh, implementing these things from the foundation not from a PNI perspective or a growth perspective. So um, the important thing here is uh, really pulling in help from, from wherever it is and, 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 and pushing things forward as fast as possible. Amit Beckman, um, if someone can just put the DAO in, in Constitution on pause, then what, even, what, then what even is the point of either a Q is a Q? Look, I'm putting this proposal um, uh, up just because I think this is the right moment. Someone's... Uh, Someone's unmuted, by the way, uh, whoever is whoever's breathing there, uh, just as a heads up. Um, and again, I outlined this in the proposal, uh, but frankly, I just think that we decentralized too early. Um, the important piece here is the resetting of expectations um, and and how I think we should operate today. Um, and ultimately, you know, uh, my plan is not to be the uh, 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 ultimate uh, arbiter here uh, for, for the long term. So, um, you know, uh, we intended to have the DAO from the start. We launched that, I think, two or three months after we launched the network. And I happily stepped down from the foundation um, 18 months ago because it felt like we were at a good point to operationalize it. Um, at that point, we were doing you know, well over a billion in traffic. I think the price was down, but uh, at the same time, uh, I think we had pretty uh, uh, broad prospects. And also, you know, uh, was working on, on getting growth uh, uh, turned around as well. I'm still confused as to why the director stepped down and you couldn't work with them. Uh, this is a PR disaster and I've seen a hostile takeover thrown around and this is exactly what this looks like. Um, this isn't a hostile takeover. Um, I had uh, a couple conversations with, with Dermot and, and Ben last week um, and, and even earlier this week. Um, that came as a surprise to me too. I would have been happy to have a conversation, but um, you know, I, I don't think, uh, I, I'm not like negating them for that or anything like that. Uh, so we're clear here. So, um, it's uh, uh, just the way it played out. Um, I had been ready to post this proposal regardless. Um, and uh, yeah, that's just unfortunate uh, uh, the way that, that worked out. What is the process of closing the DAO and what does that mean for the foundation? Um, again, it's putting it on DAO, it's putting it on pause and uh, uh, ultimately having um, control from the foundation uh, for at least, uh, uh, let's call it the first year at time, right? Um, again, uh, I outlined this in the proposal, but I just think that we need to have um, singular leadership here um, across the board uh, to pull us out of this. Zoolander, <clears throat> when I look at what PNF Director shipped from 23 and 24, and what PNI shipped from 22 to 23. It's evident the progress that was made in the last year. Uh, yeah, I mean, we talked about this uh, whenever it was a couple of years ago. Um, PNI grew from 20 to 80 people in you know 10 months, something like that. Um, the fact is that you ship slower when uh, the uh, uh, technical hurdles to even learn the protocol are incredibly high, and you know that blows things down. Um, I think this was a classic mistake that many founders make, and uh, that was the result of it, right? Um, and I do think that shipping, the, the, that PNF shipping, wrap, uh, things like Wrap Pocket and some of the things that they've done are really important, particularly on the gateway side and, and the Wrap Pocket side. So, and I would also argue that um, last year, in the last year, or even the last 18 months, uh, Grove has actually made a of progress as well um, uh, when it comes to quality of service 
um, customers' revenue, these sorts of things as well. So um, it's just less, less visible at this point. Uh, what portion of the initial 50% token allocation uh, founders, PI reserves team has not been sold yet? In other words, does PI play a long game or do they sell their bags without proper vesting uh, a long time ago? Uh, look, man, um, I should have <laughs> sold more <laughs> when the price was up. Um, uh, I, I didn't. Um, I uh, still hold about half of what my own personal um, allocation was uh, back then and frankly sold it at, you know, probably lower prices than, than should have happened, um, uh, uh, just generally. Um, C and I play a long game or did they, yeah. Um, look, uh, the success of this protocol is, um, has literally been the most important thing of my life for the last seven years. And um, I don't know, you know, Vortech, we, we spoke once, but um, uh, uh, throughout this entire process, I hope that is, is fairly clear in terms of what my motivations are for this. Um, you know, I do believe that, you know, being successful, we should all, uh, be successful as a result. Uh, but generally, um, uh, uh, I've been holding with the rest of you. Um, uh, I don't know what those numbers are, um, uh, uh, today, uh, cause there's been a lot of time since those initial allocations. Um, so it's really hard to give you an answer, uh, there, but frankly, we do everything we can from at least a growth perspective to, not sell our pocket um, uh, and and keep our treasury where it's at today. How long should it take to ship a typical Cosmos SDK protocol? I mean, if you're shipping it right out of the box, um, what, a couple weeks? Um, the thing about pocket is that it's got a very unique um, uh, uh, application layer or ABCI app in this case. And that's what's taken from Basically, uh, November last year to launching our test net um, uh, a couple of weeks ago or even a month ago at this point. So um, it takes time to build new things. It takes time to test it. It takes time to build it the right way um, when it comes to even uh, uh, people being able to contribute to the new version of the protocol, uh, which is one of the long uh, one of the things I'm most proud of from the protocol team. That assumes there's no value to the vote. Um, if that's the case, we don't need the voting process. Um, look, I just, you know, uh, I don't like expect this to be just an auto pass. Um, I expect a ton of conversation to happen. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, just to keep that in mind, um, I, it's just like, this is a part of it. And this is why we're having this conversation uh, in the first place. I'm uh, just reading through here. What are your next steps if the vote is successful from RSS FZ? Um, uh, the first piece is um, just getting with the existing team on the foundation. Some folks have expressed uh, uh, wanting to stay and, and work with me. Um, the next steps are getting just a clear picture of all the work streams and uh, basically determining what the priorities are and what they aren't. Um, and then kicking off the other work streams that I uh, proposed. Um, uh, within 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 this current proposal, um, the other piece is uh, just being here and active. Um, you know, I cleared my Telegram inbox for the first time in probably three years, and uh, just ready to be here. So, hopefully, that answers your question. Yeah, to this threat of violence, uh, I want to be clear here. I haven't threatened anyone with with a fork. Um, just generally, um, like, like I said, it's something that I've considered, um, I did consider, uh, but ultimately like that's the absolute last thing that I want to do. Dermot's responding about the fork, um, because they can fork, but also this amounts to a fundamental breach of our values and why we came to pocket. What is pocket if not a decentralized project? It wasn't a good faith process that we had any say in. We were told of growth plans and it's expected to roll over. Um, look, I think the biggest mistake I'd made was not submitting these economic proposals six to nine to 12 months ago. Um, that's this is a fact, uh, probably should have, um, but I didn't. Um, and that's for you know a bunch of reasons. Um, for me uh, uh, to make the best of this, uh, the good faith here is giving you guys a heads up um, and just talking with um, as many people 
as I possibly could, particularly the largest um, stakeholders. Uh, do I expect the proposal as exactly is to uh, pass through with flying colors? Absolutely not. Uh, but just, you know, the fact is, like, you know, I fundamentally believe in things until uh, given enough evidence to change my mind. And, you know, credit to you guys, I've been saying no, no, no. And I mean, you guys as in the foundation um, until relatively recently. And the fact is, when I make a decision, uh, I make them very fast. Um, and that's just the, the nature of, you know, me as a founder and, and, and just how I lead. So. Sorry, I'm just uh, looking through the uh, the conversation. I'm just reading through Jorge Dermot. Um, why are you asking amounts ridiculously high? 48 million pox to ship Canada and half a billion USD to reach $5. Um, will you cut down such a high request or at least divide it by three? Um, I'm open to, 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 to reasoned arguments about this, but fundamentally, I think that um, myself and the team have done a ton of work and a ton of sacrifice here to make this happen. Um, ultimately, uh, uh, and I think every, and it's not, not just the growth team here, I'm talking about anyone who is participating in this when it comes to, to, to turning this around at the end of the day. So um, I just think people should be rewarded for doing it. And um, at the point we hit $5, that is a, a huge milestone to hit. Uh, Dermot, you didn't try to work with us. I mean, we've had regular catch-ups and had lots of conversations. Um, I don't want to get into those into those details, but um, it just, you know, uh, I, I think resulted in a in a pretty clear uh, divergence of, of of what we believe uh, to be important and true at this point. Uh, did I speak to the directors before reaching out to investors? Um, it was a mix. Uh, spoke to. Kind of key stakeholders, uh, particularly the largest token holders, um, but uh, it's it's a mix. Um, uh, speaking to Dermot last week uh, was was a part of it. So, again, <clears throat> uh, I am not threatening to fork the project, so we're clear here. Um, Amish, uh, the constitution and DAO exists for a reason. Growth could have utilized a product and put forward proposals and made a cage freeze one rather than attending a queue. No, others have already said it, but I'm just reading it since it's not actually, since it's not adequately, not been adequately addressed on this call. Um, so first off, it's not Grove. Um, it is me doing this. Um, Grove is doing Grove things. And um, this is me going to the foundation, um, not Grove uh, for, for one piece. Um, and again, uh, 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 I am going through these process through through this process uh, as we originally thought that, uh, uh, designed it uh, up until today. You sit slower because of the decisions you made. Why should you be rewarded with a sole director seat and complete oversight now? Well, frankly, because I got us. You know, uh, we we not just me by myself, but led the team to fill out the first version of Pocket um, and to get to the current test net we have today and to build, um, I think, a very credible business on top of the protocol um, at the end of the day. Um, look, like when you're building new things, this shit's really hard. Uh, you have unknown unknowns. Um, you don't know everything that's happening, and things are always chaotic, particularly when you're building what I think is a zero to one invention uh, with, with Pocket. So, um, and again, uh, this is rewarded with uh, specific um, uh, milestones and, and incentives. So. If I fail, I fail, right? And that's what I think is important about this proposal. Michael, do you feel like the DAO you stepped down from back in the day is the same as the one we have now? Uh, and so you will be CEO of both Grove and Pocket. And how does this work out? Um, there's definitely been some turnover and people who are less active um uh, or just don't participate in 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 the governance process um so i think it's just been a bit of a churn i think we've stayed around 30 to 40 to maybe even 50 active voters given given uh the point in time um so yeah it's different uh but i don't think there's anything wrong with that to be honest um and then so you'll be CEO, ceo of both grove and pocket or how does this work out yes i will still be ceo of grove and in this case if this proposal passes i will be 
the director on the foundation uh, for uh, uh, for this period of time. So um, again, it's not Grove uh, merging or subsuming with the foundation. Um, Grove knows exactly what they need to do and is um, chipping incredibly fast. And uh, my intention is to uh, really uh, 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 do uh, what I do on the foundation side as well. Uh, do you plan on taking a salary or is your remuneration uh, going to be purely outcome based? Um, I haven't taken a salary in almost a year at this point. Uh, I don't intend to take a salary uh, when I take uh, when I when I go to the proposal or when I go to the foundation either. Yep, Shane, you got the next question. How much funds exactly is still left in Grove to keep going? Will you be as transparent with treasury spending as PNF was? Uh, yes, uh, the intention here is to be just as transparent uh, with everything going on. Uh, Grove has runway till Q1 next year, assuming revenue stays static. Um, and we are currently in the middle of a fundraise uh, that is, I think, um, uh, we've got already 20% of, of it committed and uh, some potential leads already uh, that are interested. So um, I'm going to continue uh, with that, but uh, at the same time, also move forward with, uh, with the foundation as well. Will you break down the Shannon compensation to include a T1 listing? Can the an original PNF team give a clear update of where Pocket is with Coin, Binance and Coinbase. Um, I'll let the PNF team take that second piece. Um, yeah, uh, I think that's a reasonable request. Um, uh, if you'd like to put that in the in the in the forums, if it's not already there, I think that's worth talking about. Uh, yes, I mean, of course, the investors heard first, but, but this is after many other conversations and uh, uh, things with uh, with uh, uh, over the last 12, 12 months, basically. Um, question to Dermot and Michael, what can you guys do to turn the ship around if the current state of PNF and Grove stays it is? Um, I would continue uh, to push forward these, pro these proposals and just be incredibly active with, with how things are going. It says in the proposal that the changes will still implement if the proposal has failed, which means uh, that a fork will be coming. Um, I don't know where that said, but uh, uh, maybe just a uh, mistype or something. Or something like but... no, just got some feedback there. Uh, I seem to be getting, is there still feedback? Or no, we're good. Okay, cool. Michael, you should be rewarded with half a billion USD after multiple years of prolongations and a slow protocol delivery, burning huge amounts of down money with no results. Um, I mean, I just don't agree with, with that statement, to be completely honest. Um, I think we've done a ton. And um, uh, I think it's just greater than, than Grove at this point. Um, uh, again, it's pretty uh, 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 milestone based. And this is not all for me. Uh, for, so we're clear here. Um, this is also uh, intended to have the foundation uh, uh, distribute this um, as, as needed at the end of the day. Next question is, if the current state stays as is in the next 12 months, can protocol development still continue without the funding issues we see today? Um, I think the protocol will launch before the end of the year, so I think we're, we're okay with that regardless. Uh, could you elaborate on the differences in the direction between yourself and the foundation? Additionally, I noticed your proposal mentioned a revised focus on the token. Can you expand on this? Um, look, uh, I think it's just a uh, uh, just a disagreement on leadership styles and um, and priorities. I think at the end of the day, um, uh, again, I don't uh, discount at all the foundation's effort or integrity here. I just uh, uh, we just have different opinions, um, and I, I just would rather not get deeper than that, to be completely honest. Um, and it's nothing, in my opinion, um, uh, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, 
uh, I don't know, aggressive. Within, I think, the right framing of conversations and that sort of thing, it just comes to a fundamental disagreement on um, on leadership at the end of the day. Um, and additionally, I noticed the proposal mentioned the rise of the, yeah, um, look, uh, like I said in the proposal, like it's you know, just been purely focused on product, real traction, real revenue, and really proving that this protocol uh, can really operate at the scale that it has today and in future uh, potential scales, right? Um, so uh, I think one of the key things that I personally ignored uh, over the last few years, really since we launched, is the importance of the price of the token, um, particularly when it com comes to um, uh, uh, being able to uh, leverage spending and, and treasury and, and these sorts of things. And also just like, you know, every single fucking pocket token holder, we've got tens of thousands of people that like are down and it just feels irresponsible to, uh, to ignore that, right? Um, so, you know, part of my motivation here is to really truly focus on this as I've focused on the product in the past. Uh, what are the timelines associated with the five deliverables? I put a three-year time box within uh, within that. So um, it's really based on uh, if and when we hit those metrics. If we don't hit them, then uh, it doesn't get paid out. How you prevent reduced QoS for older chains with your yield when 10x emissions are turned on for new chains? What's the set of node runners from focusing only on new chains for higher profitability? Um, the same market applies if people leave. Uh, this is particularly important with, with Gandalf. Um, if people decide to stop supporting Ethereum for other chains, um, other Ethereum node runners will earn more yield, right? So that market naturally balances out. I see some Binance and Coinbase stuff there. Uh, looks like I'm near the end of it here, at least on the questions on the community calls. Um, I've answered a couple of questions I have here in my notes. Uh, the first question was 2.7 million for shipping Shannon. I think I addressed that. Uh, half a billion uh, if you get the price to, to $5. Um, here, I see another question here from Zoolander. You have enough pool as a founder to submit these changes as a standalone proposal and get them approved. Um, I, can, I don't think there is a guarantee that it gets approved. Uh, the fact that you want complete control is just so weird. Um, I, again, I highlighted this in the context of the proposal. Um, you know, for me, it's a resetting of expectations when it comes to something like this. Um, you know, uh, I've always been someone who uh, uh, really wants to... Uh, uh, give as much to as many people as possible, uh, and I, you know, if if if, if that doesn't uh, track with you know my track record generally, um, I don't know what to tell you. Um, but uh, the fact is that yeah, I'm. I mean, I don't think anyone has uh, uh, more to lose than I do with something like this. So um, I would hope that uh, as a founder and someone has thought about this for for so long, uh, there is some pull there for for and uh, for, for for that fact. Um, you know, there is precedent for this, whether that's, you know, uh, Ilya going back to Nier um, or Rune with Maker. Um, this is obviously not the same kind of a situation, but nonetheless, um, uh, uh, this isn't uh, something that's unheard of, let's say. Uh, I'm going back to my notes here. Um, how are you going to achieve the 10 billion market cap and what has you confident that you can get there? No inference is being served and clearly the RPC model won't make it happen. Um, Look, uh, I think uh, this requires a lot of iteration uh, and speed. I've laid out what I think uh, the things that we can control are from a pocket network perspective. And, um, you know, the plan is to iterate and go from there. Um, I've never focused uh, purely on just this itself. Um, and uh, I do believe that if I put my focus on stuff, uh, on things, uh, we can make things happen. Um, again, I laid out what I think the initial plan is. Do I think this is what's going to get us to Five dollars or more, uh, probably not. But at least from my first principles thinking, um, I think it's a reasonable approach. So, um, and again, um, I touched on this before, but uh, clearly, just the RPC model won't make it happen. Um, yeah, I agree with that. Uh, part of this is expanding as quickly as possible and enabling as many gateways as possible uh, across multiple types of services, whether that be inference, storage, indexing, um, social protocols. Um, Hell, I even thought about bringing back fucking RSS uh, with with incentives to 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 relay. So, 
Um, I just think there's a ton of potential, and I think um, within three years we can move very quickly. Um, uh, what will happen to the current market maker for Pocket? Um, I'm not involved in that. Um, I, I'm just going with uh, assuming things stay uh, as same, but I don't have enough insight into that right now. Um, will the release of Pocket on multiple chains clear the hurdles for a T1 listing? Uh, I think we saw some of the listing stuff previous. Um, I don't, don't have insight into that. Um, now that PNF is dissolved or controlled by a U.S. company, how will it address government censorship? Um, one of the main reasons I invested in Pocket was the belief that Pocket is key uh, to avoiding government censorship. How will the new structure solve this issue? Uh, the thing that actually uh, 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 controls government censorship, in my opinion, is this idea of, um, of permissionless demand. Um, ultimately, uh, Pocket is, uh, while we have a hard consensus, there's also a social consensus here that's really important. Uh, as a U.S. founder, um, if the government decides to arrest me or try to uh, take my private keys or whatever it might be, uh, I would expect the protocol to do a social fork um, and figure out things from there. Uh, the important, the most important piece about censorship, in my opinion, is permissionless demand. Uh, and when we talk about uh, uh, the work it takes to get to that, that is all the research and work it's done to when, when it comes to relay mining and implementing this uh, at the end of the day. So. Um, uh, that is really what, um, for me, drives censorship for Pocket. Um, and ultimately, this is a social consensus that we are uh, uh, even experiencing here right now in this conversation. So um, uh, uh, that's uh, 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 the, the conversation here. Um, I'd love to hear what other gateway operators think of this, building out their gateways, thinking they had an equal footing, and then to see the CEO of the competitors submit a proposal have compete control. Uh, of of the protocol, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Thanks, Jorge. Um, uh, I, I I I think it's pretty clear. Um, I felt that it's incredibly important uh, to have um, as many gateways as possible. Uh, I've had a couple conversations with gateways uh, uh, before today. I'll be meeting with a couple more next week in Brussels. Um, but uh, ultimately, we're actually quite close with several of them um, at this point and have only been supportive from a Grove perspective uh, to other, other gateways. Uh, yes, T1 listings, that's absolutely still a priority, of course. Uh, that's all the, I think I've caught up with all the questions that I've uh, theme. So um, I'm happy to wait. I see a bunch of people typing. So uh, if anyone wants to chime in or, or anything. Otherwise, happy to wait for people. Hey, uh, just wanted to make one comment. Um, I, I, I wrote it in text, but I, uh, but I just wanted to make sure it was audibly um, also heard too, in case people listen to this later. Um, but the question, uh, there was a question, you know, what are the next steps if the vote is unsuccessful? And I just wanted to make sure uh, everyone kind of understood that um, if it is unsuccessful, uh, then things basically carry on uh, as they currently are in terms of um, uh, in terms of uh, myself right now, currently being the in interim director. Um, and uh, that doesn't change uh, if this vote is unsuccessful. Um, obviously, uh, we would be in a kind of a position where we would need to vote on uh, directors. So uh, I don't exactly know what that looks like. But I just wanted to say, because technically it's my fiduciary duty to just let people know that um, uh, if, if this vote doesn't go through, most likely uh, directors in some capacity uh, would be established. Uh, and from there, um, you know, proposals would continue as they are. So, you know, economic proposals could could go through the same means as as they have in the past. So um, just because that's 
literally my responsibility. I just wanted to communicate that as best as I could. Thanks, Jen. Triple seven. Uh, so three directors left. Uh, who I who I assume has been spending have been spending time in building English for high priority things like these things. Uh, and now you and now all that load you want to do yourself amongst other responsibilities and your extremely limited availability given that you are in the air a lot. I'm confused how this results in things speeding up. How you ensure that the highest priority activities remain as such, uh, and is there there is sufficient follow through to get it done? Look, uh, uh, this is definitely not going to happen. <laughs> Um, uh, by myself, for one thing. Um, I would hope uh, if this proposal passes, uh, we have a relatively smooth transition with whatever conversations are happening. Um, when it comes to me being around and available and these sorts of things, um, like I said, uh, uh, Grove is, is running Grove. I mean, uh, Grove knows exactly what, what it needs to be doing uh, at this point. Um, and it's a pretty uh, uh, light touch. So when it comes to timing and this sort of thing, um, I think it makes sense. Um, literally, my entire focus would be uh, related to, to pushing this forward at this point. Uh, so no, I'm not saying I want to do this all on my own. Uh, yes, I'm saying I want to keep um, uh, those folks that still uh, that are still in the foundation um, that want to work with me um, and, and see where that goes. Um, and yeah, I mean, even later this year, it's, it's really doing uh, a lot of uh, pocket So, um, yeah, things have been, uh, I don't know, improving for, from our perspective, from micro perspective over the last six, 12 months. that uh, this is something that I feel like I should focus on and also lean uh, from, I think, talented people, because uh, again, it's not by myself. Um, I think it's, a, it's not an either or, it's an and. Um, so when we talk about the economics, um, uh, 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 back the efforts of the prior administration, I'm not sure what you mean by prior administration, but at a high level, um, uh, I think that, uh, like I said before, uh, by removing ourselves from the uh, 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 kind of reflexive dynamic that we had before as a, as a correction uh, did not do us any good in hindsight. And two, I think there just really hasn't been a focus on the price of the token um, from either myself or, or uh, 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 the foundation for that matter when it comes to being explicit about driving value to the token. So um, I think those are the two main things that would be changing here. We're getting kind of into territory here that I just don't think it's worth getting into. Um, so uh, I, you know, yeah. So maybe keep either keep it to the den or um, uh, whatever it might be. So. I got post typing here, but um, I don't know if it's a it's a if it's a question or a response to something else. So happy to take something else if someone uh, wants to chime in or uh, type something.
maybe we can filter out the pauses or something like that. While the chat is busy, does anybody have any questions they want to come off mic and ask themselves? Yeah, I have a quick question here from uh, Mike. Uh, would you reconsider to work again with uh, the uh, the existing DAO? I mean, with uh, with Ben, Dermot, and uh, Jack. Yeah, of course. I just think that we uh, clearly had some some fundamental disagreements, and, well, and, and instead yeah. of instead of being a sole uh, director there, uh, I don't know how, how we can consider to have another DAO with uh, yourself and the other directors. Can, can, can you uh, reframe or repeat the question for me? It wasn't super clear. Uh, well, the, the idea is instead of you uh, as a sole director. Uh, what, what about maintaining the existing DAO with the existing directors and just to join them and try to improve the things the way you want? Like I said, I think it comes to a disagreement in, in leadership um, and, and a, a bit of a reset when it comes to that perspective. Um, so, so yeah, uh, would I be, would I love to work with them? Yeah, I've always enjoyed working with, uh, with them uh, regardless. So. Um, and when I see a question here, well, why should all voters invalidate the votes, granting full control of the network without the ability to reverse it? Uh, did it once? Uh, if you you know don't think uh, I could do it again, then uh, you know that's I think that's your opinion. But uh, my intention here is not to be uh, uh, in control here forever. So um, that's kind of the key piece here. And uh, I'd be open to. Uh, adding like different types of checks and balances uh, in, in, as a part of the proposal or in this process. So if you want those guarantees as well, because frankly, I'm happy to, to add those. This, this is more of a comment than a question, maybe a little bit of a question, but um, you know, given that the PNF leadership has stepped down, there's really only one path here. Uh, so how much, um, maybe I'll turn it into, how much um, uh, would you hope to get from the current voters, the, the DAO? I mean, there's, there's, there's really not a counter path anymore. Yeah, I mean, it's a pretty monster proposal, um, you know, uh, 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 really, you know, I think it's going to take time for people to, to digest and, 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 and absorb, um, you know, uh, so at least a couple of weeks of active uh, conversation and, and revisions and edits and that sort of thing. So you expect re revisions to the proposal, just like a normal proposal, just kind of back and forth. But but again, it's kind of the can the, the vote is sort of up. It's already concluded. There's there's no other vote, um, so it would just be refining what's what's there, I guess. Well, the vote hasn't concluded, nor has it even started, right? Um, and yeah, uh, this is why uh, I posted it. Um, I haven't taken a look at any of the comments on the proposal yet, but uh, I would please just advocate for people to to to. Uh, uh, put in their thoughts or uh, whatever it might be within the proposal. Yeah, and Steve, I I, I do want to clarify, like uh, this this doesn't stop PNF. What it would do is uh, PNF would uh, we would go through a process of uh, establishing uh, the board, right? So it that that is. There, there are options, and I just need to 
it's literally my responsibility to make sure that these kind of things are communicated because um, this isn't a one one option thing. And uh, if if I'm going to do my job properly, I'm just going to be able to, or I'm just going to communicate that this is a DAO's decision on how they want processes to go in the future. Uh, do the processes go uh, in a you know in in a in a public sense uh, where it's voted on on individual proposals, um, or is uh, essentially the the uh, the board turned into uh, you know, a, a board of one and uh, and the processes don't go through the DAO. That's that's ultimately what's uh, what's at at vote here. So, um, yeah, so I, I just want to make sure that I'm being crystal clear as part of my job here is um, this. Every everyone still has a vote and people can make the decision that they that they want. So um, no one should be forced uh, into into anything that they don't agree with. Everyone should, uh, you know, vote with their conscience, obviously. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, thanks Shane. Shane. Uh, Jorge, uh, Michael, would you still open proposals and read the research that the community does like the ones where you, uh, Ramiro, Shane, Ben, and others uh, about hot topics. Yep, absolutely. I'm really viewing this as um, uh, a shift in my priorities and um, the, the the work that I need to be doing at a, at a network level, right? So none of that would change in my opinion, because again, um, I, I referred to this in my, in my proposal, but I am not uh, 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 saying I have all the answers here. I like to think about things from first principles and uh, iterate on on what I think works. But um, but yeah, these sorts of things, particularly that, uh, frankly, just require a lot of thinking and research. Just won't happen overnight, anyway. Uh, Jumpy Jojo, I'm happy to have another session next week. We'll carve time out. Uh, 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 we'll carve time out uh, next week while while I'm in Brussels for sure. Adam, is there uh, a middle ground here where there are some checks and balances with a regular elected multi-party board that can move as fast as any other company rather than a single person board with total executive authority? Um, yeah, I think so. Um, I would appreciate uh, uh, thoughts in that direction. I've already had conversations about that, but um, but yeah. Triple seven. I mean, this is fully uh, outlined in in the um, in the proposal, uh, but it goes to this uh, going back to to this dynamic inflation and uh, some other um, plans and 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 changing parameters to, to support that. Uh, Michael, also to clarify, the DAO will be put on for put on hold for how long? Um, uh, again, I put a time box here for for three years, uh, for at least for some of those um, uh, uh, milestones. But again, um, this is not going to be just back room. This is going to be uh, uh, in full open and in, in, in conversation with everyone. So uh, I would expect regular check ins, regardless. I, I, do, I just don't want to put a timeline on when the right time is or anything like that. I think we'll all understand when that time is at the end of the day.
Relaying a question from John Doe on Telegram, he is unable to join Discord due to some account issues. Why do you feel the need to start this now, given the current state of the market, instead of waiting for a better time? I think it would honestly be a bit more, uh, frankly, disingenuous if if we were, uh, you know, uh, at a different price and, and total valuation today. Is my is my complete is is my honest answer there. Um, you know, it's uh, again like I mentioned in the proposal and the dissenting opinions. Um, it's a bit of a, a of a moral uh, obligation that I feel that I have to, to make this happen. Ms. Kitty, what if for some reason you become unable to serve as sole executive director? Is there a possible emergent succession plan in place? Um, yeah, there should be something, right? Um, whether that be uh, a, and I'm sure there's stuff in the documentation related to that. So. Um, yeah, that should absolutely be there. Did recent struggles in gross fundraising push you to do this? Um, it's not struggles necessarily. I would say it's uh, just feedback from the market when it comes to this at the end of the day. Um, and also just uh, uh, kind of overseeing where the network is going as well. So this is not something that has come to me in the last month, month and a half. Um, uh, uh, this is something that's been uh, at least, you know, independently approached to me multiple times by, by different people uh, around. Uh, what feedback, uh, you know, uh, pocket is dead, pocket is tokenomics are broken, um, you know, there's a lot there uh, and, and it's tough to filter through what people really think, but uh, it's just a clear signal, uh, one of the signals from the market that helped uh, push me over from things that need to change. Change to your point, um, heard of a project, the next day changes uh, tokenomics that is a uh, that an individual controls it feels like this would be a new greater approach to economics every project i know has relatively has a relatively predictable economic system uh, so this is something very different um i think uh yeah it's different um and i think just the fact is that uh, we need to be able to to sprint i think the important piece here is we're launching permissionless um uh, demand uh, by the end of the year and uh, uh the ability to uh, experiment quickly while uh, uh, we're at the valuation that we are at gives us, I think, an advantage to try as many things as possible and iterate as quickly as possible. Zoolander, so because of the feedback you received trying to fundraise for Grove, you made the decision for Pocket. Um, well, for me, Grove success uh, 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 is very tied to Pocket success and vice versa. Um, and no, it's not just from that feedback. Uh, the same way that we went about the process of um, uh, 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 doing a research sprint for uh, uh, working on a rollup for uh, for, uh, for 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 the network. Um, it's kind of a similar process here. Um, it's not just I never. It's it's never just one person. Uh, even even a few people. Um, so so yeah. Um, it's just it's a series of of. Uh, uh, signals uh, uh, that, that I personally think. Perhaps I haven't heard of a project rewarding a CEO of half a billion USD for reaching uh, an 8 billion market cap. Is it another innovation uh, and crypto first to be proud of? Um, look, it's not even about that. It's just about um, really uh, uh, having um, something, some meat behind this, and um, ultimately, hopefully, uh, uh, everyone uh, being very uh, happy about the results at the end of the day. So, Ben, can you let us know which proposals you've made in the last 12 months that were delayed by the DAO? Um, look, I say this in the proposal or in, in, in the actual proposal itself, I haven't made any proposals. I've been fairly inactive, um, and that's just, just the fact. Um, uh, 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 I think that's what I mentioned before. Uh, one of the things that uh, I think uh, I've made a mistake on is is not uh, uh, prioritizing that. 
Uh, but at the end of the day, um, I've just spent a lot of time uh, internally with Grove at this point in time. Why don't you lower it then? Um, you know, if we drive this. Uh, I frankly, uh, again, I think I should be rewarded for it. Again, that all of that is not for me. This is meant to be distributed across everyone as well. But I think everyone who participates should 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 participate in that or should uh, receive those rewards. In my opinion, I just want to really, for the first time, align incentives um, with I think the tens of thousands of, of token holders that we have today. Um, because if there's anything I've seen across the chats and 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 the next of the comments, you know. Um, uh, what about the price of the token and this sort of thing? And frankly, it matters. We got another person typing here. Got some water too. How confident are you that the proposal is going to pass? Um, I have no idea. Uh, I had to throw out a number. 50-50? Um, I don't know. Uh, no clue. So. Tony asked, may I speak, have some questions to ask Tony, yeah. Um, hi, Mike. Um, okay, I've read your proposal and okay right now current inflation is five percent 4.5 to five percent raising to 20 percent Dow treasury getting 75 percent of that means almost 15 percent so five percent goes to node runners okay let's say this is all okay my concern is um not with the amount of tokens that you want to get okay let's say since development funding is very important 48 million pocket for shipping channel okay that's not a problem let's say 50 cents okay 48 million not a problem one dollar 48 million not a problem okay three dollar five dollar yeah i mean you can get if you can maintain three dollars for a month average and you getting 98 million pocket for grove or whatever purposes okay i think a lot of people in this room won't have a problem with that because by the time it reaches three and that remains yeah people can dump on two so that's not a problem if this plan goes on i will my my um actual um worry is this okay now expanding the gateway reducing the fee to zero okay that's okay that means anybody can just make a gateway and try to push in as many fake relays as possible trying to inflate the inflation from 20 percent to whatever it is currently the rttm adjusting the inflation is done once a week if this is done once a week that means there is a one week period where that inflation can be shoot up to 600 percent 700 percent with a fake relays making um i don't know um 
the inflation to be over the heads. So in your proposal, I mean, I'm not really clear. You're saying something about six months and 30%, etc. What is the specific RTTM that you are trying to hit? If 20% is inflation and there is more traffic coming in, inflation going to 100 200%, that means Dow Treasury will be very fastly included, right? Yeah, that's one worry. The second worry is if it's reduced to 5,000, current 60,000 stake will be divided into 12 times 5,000. That means 12 notes. Now, 12 notes means more money has to be induced by the node runners or someone who's um, send, I mean, giving the token to the node runners, like whatever they are, the node providers. They're like earning more money. So they're going to favor your proposal for sure. But what I'm saying at the end of the day, I mean, is this inflation is going to be like, you know, be controlled at 20% and, you know, in three years, it's going to be 60 plus percent of inflation together, 2020, 2020 plus, you know, on top of whatever was 20% before. So if that happens, um, can we really reach the goal that you are stating 50 cents a dollar probability? Um, yeah, I mean, for that, for now, yeah, that's the question. So, so just to restate it, right, um, you're asking about the interplay between um, the inflation, um, the Dow take, and um, the ability for, for gateways to self deal, right? Um, and, and how does that play out? Is, is that can you just confirm for me that's that's the question that you're asking? The question is, I mean, since gateway don't have to pay anything, yes, I can understand that there will be more gateways forming up. But they can make any gateway, real, you know, giving fake relays. You know, since Shannon is saying yep. you can make a gateway, so you can just deliver any fake relays you know, saying how much balance does this one have? How much balance does it have? This can repeat for like a trillion times. And then we as an investor can think of that as, well, traffics are increasing. Okay, the gateway must be making tons of money. In reality, it's a fake relay, meaning more coins will be minted. Good for the node runners since they are like 5%. But non-node runners, just coin holders or investors, they'll be diluted in a huge time so how can you prevent that that's my question um so when it comes to shannon um so look i think i think it's less of a risk in um uh uh, uh in the current version of pocket because it's uh, uh the gateways are, are permissioned uh for, for 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 point number one so um i'm advocating to start these changes now during shannon so we can learn um, but when it comes to, or post uh, before Shannon, forgive me, uh, so we can learn uh, what works and what doesn't and, and, and move quickly. Uh, when it comes to Shannon, um, I think uh, uh, actually having one-to-one -one burn uh, to, to mint um, is, is actually a good thing to do um, and effectively uh, distributing um, a form of a rebate or something like that through, through the foundation, I think uh, is, is an interesting approach. I've had conversations like this. This is not fully defined, but generally with the launch of Shannon and permissionless um, demand, I think the one-to-one -one burn is is really, really important here when it comes to uh, uh, the fees and what the gateways are spending. Um, generally, I want to, you know, uh, uh, remove the uh, any inhibitor for new gateways because uh, we, I think we should incentivize as many folks as possible. Um, I know if growth feels the 85 cents, um, uh, others do as well. Uh, and, and it's just really important for me to incentivize as many gateways as possible. Um, and I think some form, which requires research and uh, thinking, and I've had conversations uh, about this, um, uh, some form of a rebate uh, uh, where, where, where that comes back to those gateways for, for, for sending that burn is, is, I think, at least an interim solution uh, for, for the time being, because that, that is a hard problem. And I, I would like to just make a comment here regarding some of the tokenomics stuff. I, I, I think there, 
there is going to be a lot of things that have to be flushed out. Um, uh, with 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 what you were saying, Tony, about how uh, having the DAO apportion at seventy five percent and node runners, uh, yeah, there there would. I I I personally need to see this laid out. Like, need to understand what what the ramifications of all of these are. Uh, with my experience in the past with like Ben and, ben and Dermot in charge of, uh, you know, as directors, um, I, I mean, I, 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 I talked with them many times about different tokenomics theories, ideas. Um, I found them, you know, very, very open to, to talking. I think the thing was, is uh, it, you know, the, it, it would need to be flushed out before taking it before the community, right? And, and trying to push it through. So uh, at least right now with, with, with some of the theories that, uh, you know, Michael's presenting, I, I'm not necessarily opposed to some of the, the philosophies behind it. Um, I myself have been working on that a numerous times throughout the years, literally putting proposals out with one of the factors being, hey, this could actually incentivize buy pressure because it creates more competition or uh, uh, it lets more people enter the space, what, whatever it is. I've, I've been very much, a huge amount of my own work has gone into trying to open that up. Um, and especially since joining PNF, there's there's definitely been an, uh, an, an, an openness that I've been experiencing with, yeah, talking about different tokenomics models, talking about different things that we want in Shannon, because Shannon was kind of a blank slate. And then once you kind of start to understand Shannon and maybe what we could have in Shannon, we could then start applying things to Morse to see how we can get there. Um, so, I mean, so for me, I, I'm, I'm the, I'll, it doesn't matter what tokenomics proposal is being put out. I'll always ask for, you know, some way to to validate these numbers because there have been times in the past where uh, the team was on board with pushing, like leadership at the time was going to push a proposal through that would have crashed the ecosystem, and it was because it was mapped out that uh, people were able to, uh, you know, myself was able to identify where there would be issues. So I don't so, think that, um, you know, what Michael, I, I don't think what Michael is suggesting is, you know, other people wouldn't be a part of reviewing this, but that is for me a hesitation with the vote uh, on on specifically like these tokenomics things is is understanding what exactly the details of them are. And then regard, and just in general, I, I think there are a lot of ways that we can approach um, Morrison and, and Shannon. Um, and so uh, like right, right before all of, actually just last week, uh, talking with, um, uh, Dermot, Ben, uh, Wojtek, all kind of brainstorming on, you know, what are ways that maybe we could do distribution events, right? Uh, you know, like cap the token, uh, uh, and then have distribution events, you know, like when Shannon's hit or when certain, you know, when certain milestones are hit, have distribution events for node runners, um, and, and for, you know, people participating in the ecosystem. I, I don't know how taking away the burn, uh, cost. Uh, I, I like the theory of it because it allows more people to join, but self-dealing is just it's just a reality. And and there've already been you know games that people have played inside of uh, you know the node running space to get more uh, get more reward and get more relays. So that that's that's just that's just a, a nature of being a part of a market is uh, there is going to be gaming. So I personally lean on the gaming protection side. Um, but is there a way that you know we could unlock? uh more incentives for gateways to join sources uh to join uh node runners to join in a way that doesn't give up self-dealing i i do believe there 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 could be solutions out there so um anyways that th those are just some of my thoughts if we're talking strictly on the um like kind of economic proposal of this those those are just some of my feedback Thanks, Shane. Um, Dermot said to be super clear, I mean, why not improve iteratively instead of all at once from Dermot? Um, I think it's just very clear that we need to, to change quite a bit fast, at least from my perspective. Um, and that's why it's all put in one proposal. Um, and uh, 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 again, uh, it, it will iterate, um, but 
I have uh, what I believe is a, a first principles view on how to at least improve what we can control, uh, not depending on on listings, um, uh, uh, gateways growing um, at least over time. Uh, but I mean, in, particularly in the in the short term. So, I mean, when we talk about gaming, the the, the fact is the burn does not is is not equivalent to the uh, mint today. Right, They're, we're still minting much more POC than what's being burned uh, today and date. So, so the same self-dealing concerns are uh, uh, valid even in the current iteration. Uh, I mean, they they partially are. Depends on what scale you have. I've 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 done a lot of calculating around this, and um, you you can kind of marginally yes, but uh, uh, there there's still some challenges. Um, if if everything was free, uh, there it would go from there would be challenges to there really wouldn't be challenges, um, and there wouldn't be any way to kind of really track that. So um, that's at least from from my own research that I've done. There, um, I'm looking here. Uh, and, Michael, and what are the proposals because, in place? Oh, oh, sorry, sorry. Michael. Go ahead. I, I was no, just going to say, ahead, and, 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 and the reason, like the main reason of that is because with self-dealing, you have to send traffic to your own nodes. So uh, in a normal session, if a uh, if a gateway is sending only traffic to their own nodes, that'd be identifiable, right? Um, yes. But 100%. if they were sending it to everyone in the session, that then would become expensive, right? So that's that's yes. the difference here. Right, where it becomes expensive if you have to send node uh, calls to everyone, right, uh, to still, you know, uh, get a profit on your self dealing. Um, uh, so if you take away the burn, then you don't have a cost to just sending traffic to everyone. Um, that's that's yeah, just but that's an amorous. It's a that's an amorous context, right? Like like I, I do think for permissionless gateways, we should have a one to one, um, and based on that on chain data, right? I mean, it's fairly. Simple to see if a gateway is trying to game the system. Um, uh, we can create basically rebates to uh, basically incentivize uh, as many gateways as possible for for some period of time, right? Yeah, this no, is a very I, simple. I, I let's call it naive naive solution, right? Yeah, there's definitely there's definitely solutions out there. Uh, and so, if we're talking about Shannon, if we're talking about doing this in Morse, I'm saying that's where the challenge is with Shannon uh, with implicit QoS. Uh, uh, and with dynamic, what, what we're calling dynamic uh, uh, RTTM, both of those prevent self-dealing uh, on on their like their mechanisms that allow us to do permissionless gateways by eliminating self-dealing, and that's why uh, that's why I kind of thought through what those mechanisms are, and and they're in they're in Shannon because it allows us to get to the permissionless side with still having the staking yeah. side, um, but it does require a burn in order for any of this to work. Uh, right. So, that that's at least the challenges of, of taking away the burn completely within Morse. Yeah, exactly. Um, and to be fair, within Morse, right, it's still um, permissioned, right? Um, I think it's taken, uh, you know, building in relationships to uh, pass over some of these application stakes to to the existing node provide or the existing gateways as is today, right? The 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 ones that we have live today, right? So uh, there is a level of trust, and I think that's a risk we that's a fair risk to take in my opinion uh, given the importance of it um Wojtek, uh to be fair what dermot probably means is why we didn't launch a cosmos upgrade with morse parity first and then iterate on top of it instead of waiting years for the big migration uh, because we didn't uh, uh there's there's no difference um to be completely honest um i don't know if lofansky if you're on on this call but um uh uh like we haven't hit um, scaling constraints on Morse. Uh, so it makes sense to continue with, uh, I think, what is a uh, uh, a zero to one improvement with, with relay mining and scale and permissionless applications and gateways, right? So um, uh, I just, th there's no reason uh, other than just to do it. And frankly, having a live network um, uh, is always harder to upgrade than um, particularly with, with the new things. With the new features, uh, than 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 going on uh, before we launch it. 
gateway bootstrapping is good, but unpredictable future inflation beyond 20% is a worry. Um, uh, this is something that I think will be one of the dynamic, like I, I, I truly want to see what happens uh, with some of the efforts that I outlined in the proposal to see what numbers are the correct. Maybe it's 10%, maybe it's 15, maybe it's 50%. I, I don't know it because it depends how fast we grow and uh, uh, what that uh, reset number is, right? So this for me is one of the things that's uh, frankly most interesting and um, uh, uh, exciting to, to experiment with economically. Uh, thanks, uh, HB, Jor. Um, sorry, I missed that. I did see the questions earlier. I just totally missed it. Um, could you estimate roughly how you will allocate your time across the two projects for open PNF? Uh, I'll be effectively, let's call it 95% focused on PNF uh, for at least the first uh, three to six months, I would say. Um, so it's full on on, on PNF for me. Um, you also mentioned you were burnt out recently. How are you making sure this doesn't happen again? Uh, uh, I think a lot of uh, self-care and, and meditation and um, uh, 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 just, uh, yeah, just being disciplined with myself, I think, at the end of the day. It's taken a bit, but uh, the last six months um, have been way better for me than, than the previous 12. So, And Van, I thought the engineering team had, had been moved under PNF. Am I wrong? Uh, do they work for Grove? Uh, the protocol team has always been under Grove, formerly known as, as PNI. Um, I think it's worth having a conversation later down the road what that structure should look like later. But I just think, you know, practically speaking and costs and operationally, I don't think it makes much, much sense today. From Jorge, Michael, what would be the best way to acquire apps for the upcoming gateways? Uh, previously, was talking directly with the PNF team. Um, I think there's a lot of opportunity for uh, uh, kind of growth marketing, um, SEO, particularly for lesser traffic chains. Uh, the competition uh, when it comes to who shows up first for, you know, RPC on ZK Sync uh, is much less than Ethereum. Um, and ultimately, I think, uh, and I'm actually applying for. Uh, 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 a talk at DevCon um, uh, called uh, Practicing uh, BDSM on Gateways uh, because ultimately I think uh, Gateways will, will win based on brand uh, distribution or specialization. Um, I added the M for the meme. It could be marketing, memes, uh, whatever. Uh, but it's really about brand distribution and specialization. So would love to uh, uh, do that talk at DevCon. I, I will I will bring up that in terms of uh, acquiring apps. Um, that's that's actually one of the cool things about the source rewards is like especially these new chains. Um, when a new chain joins uh, joins Pocket and you know they don't have any other RPC provider, uh, as uh, their community utilizes Pocket, they actually get paid out in rewards. Um, and you know especially for a new chain getting started uh, getting kicked off, they actually. At least with kind of the numbers I've been playing with, they could you know make ninety percent of whatever the burn is um, without, uh, and, and that would also protect against self dealing. So in case we like create a you know add a new chain and then they start self dealing to get rewards, we can't have that. So if there's a burn there and they get like ninety percent of the burn, uh, we I, I, I believe that that will actually be a huge incentive for a lot of these chains to just go with pocket because they're getting these rewards. I believe there's mechanisms that can incentivize them to uh, keep them in the network and stake them in the network, not sell them. Uh, and so, yeah, so I, I, I think that source rewards is probably one of the most powerful because in these ecosystems would actually want to send rewards to uh, or send traffic to gateways, pocket gateways specifically. And if gateways are utilizing their own infrastructure, uh, instead of sending it to pocket, that chain actually wouldn't then receive any rewards. Uh, because it's only rewards if it goes through the network, right? Because uh, it's based on their traffic. So that's what's actually, at least for me, that's the part that I've been most passionate about, which is why I've been kind of preaching sources, um, because uh, I, I think that's a very viable strategy um, because any they're incentivized. And, and that's a cool thing about something like Grove, where they send all their traffic to Pocket. Like there's actually a huge incentive there for them uh, for chains to partner with Grove because 
they know that they get a cut of the rewards. And that cut of the rewards uh, doesn't actually come in a gross pocket as a as a gateway business. It it comes from the protocol itself. Um, and so it's almost like every gateway has the ability to almost give like an affiliate fee to anyone that partners, any chain that partners with them. So if a chain partners with them, uh, they get uh, immediate rewards that doesn't actually come out of their, uh, you know, their cash books. It actually comes uh, directly from the protocol itself. Thanks, Shane. And I just generally think you're doing kind of great work thinking about this stuff. Um, uh, Zoolander, this is still a massive conflict of interest. You're a major equity holder in Grove and their CEO. You're incentivized to ensure Grove stays above all other gateways. Um, I addressed this in the proposal, but um, fundamentally, Grove is shifting its business from uh, uh, serving dApps primarily to serving other gateways. Um, in addition, I don't think uh, the bootstrapping of AI conflicts with existing gateways today. Um, and fundamentally, when we talk about incentive alignment and um, you know those pocket uh, uh, milestones, um, uh, this obviously very heavily incentivizes me to drive uh, the value of the token um, uh, uh, in aggregate, meaning we want as many gateways as possible participating. Um, so, so I, I believe that the incentives are there. Um, I've been talking about this now for two years at this point, um, how important it is. Um, I think someone actually asked, uh, why doesn't Grove just, uh, uh, open source its current gateway stack? It's not easy to do that. Uh, just if you don't build for it. Um, the fact is that, uh, we built to prioritize quality of service in the last 18 months. Uh, but uh, it is something that uh, we are working on, and I would actually expect uh, more open source contributions from Grove uh, moving forward regardless. Um, I think there's a ton that we can add from a Grove perspective to the ecosystem when it comes to enabling other gateways. Um, I think one of the most important products that we can launch is really, you know, uh, I think we've got some of, the, some of the other gateway folks on this call. Um, you know, I mean, my vision is to have it so that, you know, within 30 minutes, you can your, you know, our package on a server and you can start building your business, right? Um, so, yeah, that's where we're at. Or that's how, uh, uh, how, how I would address that question. We are coming up on two hours here. Are there uh, significant questions that uh, folks would still like to ask, or where are we at? Uh, we got a couple economic proposals. I'm, I'm happy to or, uh, uh, economic questions. I'm happy to address. Um, more inflation is meaningless and dangerous unless you can pump up paid relays. Um, I think the point of the inflation here is uh, uh, not necessarily focused on the uh, 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 demand side, i.e. gateways. It's more focused on the supply side uh, to drive net new pur uh, pocket purchasers, uh, resulting in kind of what we went through uh, between 2021 and 2022. Um, and I just answered, uh, uh, why don't we open source growth gateway stack immediately? Um, again. It, you can't just like flip a switch um, uh, to open source something like that. Uh, things are pretty um, intertwined, um, and it would take several cycles of the team to put out something that, frankly, a product that I think we, uh, we, we're, we're proud of. So just to keep on this uh, thread, why do we need more nodes at this point? Um, I'm actually not advocating for um, many more nodes. I think it's really important to have more independent node runners, and Gandalf, I think, significantly addresses that. Uh, what I really want to focus on is net new pocket purchasers who um, actually are delegating uh, to the existing node running companies today. So it's not necessarily about the nodes; it's more about the uh, token and the and the, and the delegation. Zoolander, so open source protocol development has been open source since 
since day one. So um, I recommend checking out the uh, the GitHub there. Ahmed, um, what do you think? What makes you think it will help Pocket Network to going back to the bootstrapping phase, high inflation, and we spent the last two years trying to come out of it? Um, as I kind of state in the proposal, it's just pretty clear that we have had zero or very little net new demand um, uh, for the token, um, not enough to sustain us, um, particularly when it comes to um, uh, 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 being effectively a fully liquid token. Um, if you read through the proposal, one of the key things here is that um, this kind of engine that I'm kind of referring to around launching new chains or new services, whether that be AI or something else, um, that's a sustainable um, function for the protocol. Um, uh, there's effectively an infinite number of open source uh, data sources, if you will, whether that be a model or a blockchain or something else. Um, so we are very heavily incentivized to continue to add these new services. And I think with some of the work that Shane is doing um, when it comes to some of these incentives, um, I think we can do a, a ton um, uh, when it comes to, to driving uh, demand that I think is uh, sitting there that we haven't um, uh, acquired. From Jorge, uh, well, but Grove does not open source a thing about gateway, so it does not look like you want more gateways on the path. Um, and there are a lot more inquiry from a few PNF members to get everything open sourced. Um, like I said, it, it can't, it just doesn't happen overnight. And additionally, like we've got other priorities too, right? Like, like we're supporting, I don't know what, 40, 50 chains today, um, making sure that we have the right quality of service for uh, all of these chains. And all of this learning is is going towards uh, being able to do this uh, open sourcing of our gateway stack the right way, um, w w at least what we view as uh, our way, uh, our opinion way. Let's write, let's let's say opinionated way, right? So um, again, it doesn't happen overnight. And uh, when we talk about keeping um, uh, the 500 plus million requests, uh, of which 90% are paid, um, which has grown from, I think the 300 or so that we had when we first uh, cut off uh, the free endpoints, um, uh, it just takes a ton of work from the team uh, at this point. We are getting at two hours. Thanks for flagging that, Jinx. Um, I'm happy to take the conversation to the den or uh, the forums um, and, and have a follow-up call with everyone next week. There's a, a final question by Jerry there that I think is worth answering. What's going to happen to initiatives like ongoing quick grants and retro pre GF? Any, I mean, any commitments regardless would be would be followed through. Um, uh, so would not um, uh, renege on anything like that from my perspective. Oof. Well, that was quite a Q&A session. I would really recommend... Uh, taking the majority of further questions or, or thoughts, uh, you know, in favor or against to the forum post itself. Uh, I do think it's important to use the forum to preserve answers where uh, things like Discord and Telegram are, are tend to be a little transient. Uh, so the link is uh, in the sidebar chat, or you can just go to the forum and uh, hit topics. And I think it's probably sitting at the top right now. Uh, I'd love to see uh, everyone's community input there. Thanks, Jinx. And yeah, I'll be I'll be around and online. So uh, again, thanks thanks for 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 coming, everyone, and, and all the I think uh, uh, good and and hard questions for that matter. So uh, I think that's important. So appreciate it. All right, and we will see you all next week, uh, noon, uh, our normal time in the uh, same channel.